Hello, welcome back to the Ball Games 4K YouTube channel. And this is a channel where we give you reviews, playthroughs, unboxings, and we generally talk a lot of bollocks about tabletop gaming in general. And in this video, we're going to be continuing our run through of our top 100 board games of all time. This is number 10 down to number one. Yes, it's the top 10. It's Christmas Day. And so a very happy Christmas to you and all whoever you're sharing Christmas with this year. If you agree with our list, then put a comment in the section down below. If you don't agree with our list, then unbug. So remember, if you're new here, then please consider subscribing to this channel. Leave a comment in that section down below, and we'll see you after this. Board games, 4K. So number 10 on this list is a game by Vlada Shvatel, the guy who done Galaxy Trucker, he done Space Alert and all that sort of stuff. This is Mage Knight. This is a game that is far too complicated to explain in 10 seconds, whatever, however long many seconds we got here. Essentially what it sees you doing is taking control of a sort of a wizard, a mage, obviously, and a knight, obviously. And you'll be strolling around the environment, you'll be interacting with different locations like uh, villages, mage towers, keeps and all that sort of stuff you'll be using a deck building mechanism to improve your character to gain spells to gain more actions and you'll be essentially dependent on what scenario you're playing you'll be trying to sack a city within a certain amount of time and it's an absolutely amazing game um, every every time we drag this out we only i only play it solo we, we don't play this multiplayer because it takes far too long but every time i drag this out it provides me with new options. It's deep, it's challenging, it's complicated, it's meaty. It's one of the best games ever created. And they've just released a Mage Knight Ultimate Edition. It's quite expensive, but it's got all the expansions in there with none of the printing errors. So if you want a, a, a real, real challenge and you like solo gaming, Mage Knight, no contest. So number nine on this list is a game by Stefan Feld. It's Stefan Feld's masterpiece. It's Castles of Burgundy. This is a dice chucking game that has absolutely no theme. And you'll be rolling your dice. You'll be using the numbers on those dice to take various actions to gain goods that you can ship out to far off markets. You'll be trying to improve your realm by building castles. You'll be placing ships on your board. You'll be doing a little bit of farming. And whilst there's no theme in this game, the fact that you're just rolling two or maybe three dice and the game opens up and it's quick. The components aren't that great, obviously, but it's just had a new reprint or a new refresh and the component quality, I've been led to believe, is is been improved immeasurably. So if you like Euro games, this is one of the top Euro games that you can get. And if you like dice placement games, this is also one of the best dice placement games that you can get. It's Castles of Burgundy. I mean, if you haven't played it, then you're an idiot. So number eight on this list is one of the best dexterity games that you can buy today. And it will continue to be one of the best dexterity games that you can buy in the future. It is Pitch Car. This is a sort of scale trick without the electric, if you know what I mean. So essentially what you've got is a load of MDF pieces of track that you put together like a jigsaw with sort of rails that you stick in the sides of it to stop the card discs flying off. And you place your little card disc on the track and you'll be flicking it around the track trying to be the first to cross the finish line. It's that simple. There's a few other rules about whether or not you, when you fall off the track or if you flip over and stuff, but essentially that's it. It's just flicking your disc around this track. You could, if you wanted to, create the entire Formula One season out of all the different bits and they, they just kick-started a loop the loop section for this. So when that comes out of retail, we will be getting that. It's absolutely fantastic. You can get multiple sets to build all this stuff. You've got a stunt track that allows you to do jumps. It allows you to have different levels of track so you can go up and down. It's absolutely amazing. Pitch Car is one of the best games ever made and you really, really need to have this in your collection, no doubt about it. Number seven on this list is a, it started off as a two player game and now it goes up to eight players or even more if you've got the D-Day expansion. It's Memoir 44. It's, uh, we, <laughs> funnily enough, we left this off our list by mistake last year for some weird reason. Uh, maybe I was pissed or something. Memoir 44 is a, it's not a faithful recreation of World War II, but it's one of the most fun recreations of war, if that makes sense. So you're pitting one faction against the other, whether it's the Germans, whether it's the Japanese or or whatever, or the Russians or whatever, you'll be drawing cards that will allow you to take actions, whether it be moving your troops or, or doing various other special actions. And then when 
push comes to shove, you'll be rolling some dice and you'll be destroying units. And it's whoever gets a set number of medals or completes a mission objective that will win the game. This game is absolutely astonishing. It's still in print. It looks a little bit dated, you know what I mean? Maybe it does need a second edition, I don't know. There's so many expansions. You've got the Mediterranean expansion, which takes you into Africa with the British. You've got the Pacific Theater expansion, which takes you over to Japan. And you've got the Eastern Front expansion, which takes you to Soviet Russia. It's amazing. Absolutely amazing. Once you've got over the two player game, then the game also offers you an eight player overlord expansion where you can get these huge, massive maps that are longer than my. And then you could have four against four, where one player takes control of the captain and draws cards and tells other people what to do. Superb. If you haven't got Memoir 44, get it, but be prepared to dig deep because once you start playing it, you'll want to get all the expansions and all the stuff that you can get for this one. So just get it and shut up. Number six on this list is the best card drafting game known to humanity. It's Seven Wonders. It's Antoine Bowser's masterpiece. And what this does, it's you, you'll just be drafting cards out of a hand. You'll be passing the cards around, drafting them, right? And then you'll be building a civilization in front of you, in your tableau. But where this differs is it condenses down these huge, grandiose civilization games into sort of about half an hour, right? And it plays up to seven people funny old thing there's masses of expansions for this there's the babel expansion you've got the leaders expansion you've got the armada expansion there's masses of expansions maybe it's a little bit too bloated but you can mix and match you don't have to chuck it all in so seven wonders one of the best card drafting games known to humanity one of the best civilization building games known to humanity and you need to play this game you do need to play it in fact if you don't play it i'm gonna come around your house and knock you out Number five on this list is a game by Mac Gertz. It's Concordia. And this is sort of a, a quite a dry Euro, but what it does, it takes the Rondell mechanisms from his previous games like Imperial, Navigador, and Hamburgum. And it does away with the with the little wheel thing on the on the board and it transfers that into a card based system so essentially what you'll be doing with this one you'll be taking a card from your hand you'll be playing it doing what it says on the card and that's it that's all you got to do but those that simple mechanic of play a card do what it says then morphs into this mind-bending puzzle it's got wonderful components it now plays out the six players with the venus expansion not sure about that one maybe maybe it's a bridge too far but there's masses of maps for this it, it scales wonderfully from two to five players and uh yeah concordia i mean people have talked to talked about this one to death it's still being supported now it's been five years since it was released it's a wonderful wonderful euro game and that's concordia Number four on this list is a box of beer mats. It's Skull and Roses, or Skull as it, as it was now called when it was reprinted. So this is a bluffing game, right? So everybody gets a gets four beer mats, I think, and one of them has got a skull on it, the others have got roses on it, and you'll be playing a beer mat face down on the table. Once everyone's played a beer mat, then you will go into the bidding phase, and one person will then be able to start a bidding process. So you'll what you'll do, you'll sort of what you'll do, you'll say, I reckon I can turn over two beer mats without revealing a skull right but you've got to start with your own ones first that's that's the trick right and then you go around the table and then people either pass or they outbid you and the, and the last man standing will have to flip over their own beer mats first and then choose other people's beer mats flip them over without revealing a skull and it's an absolutely wonderful game it seems a little bit simple a lot of people i played this with they don't sort of get it to start with but then this there's this sudden click and it's like ah there's a, like a, a what they call a meta game going on so based on the previous games that you play you can read people are they going to do the same thing they did last time are they going to change it up are they trying to make me think that they're changing it up or are they going to try and it's an amazing game skull and roses cheapest chips only about 15 quid some of the best games we've ever played i took this to work with me once the whole room erupted when we played this it's fantastic and that is skull and roses so number three on this list, we're getting there, we're getting there. This is Kemet. This is an Egyptian theme game that is like a sort of an area control war game. And where this differs from other war games is that you are actively encouraged to get stuck into fights straight off the bat because you can teleport into your opponent's territory straight away. That's, you could do it straight away. And you've got these masses of power tiles that give you special abilities. It works in the same way as the sort of points-based system of Mexico and uh, Chaos in the Old World, you know. So you'll be using those power points, or prayer points as it were, to take certain actions, you know. It's got a Tau Ceti expansion, which gives you more stuff, more power, power tiles. And it's got the Seth expansion, which gives you the option of playing 
one versus all, which, okay, it's all right, but Vanilla Kemet is probably the best way to go with this one. It's an absolutely amazing war game. We love it. It's, uh, I, can't, I can't really speak highly about this one enough. It's absolutely amazing. So you, you've got to play this one. You've got to play Kemet. Number two on this list is a party game. It's Charade sort of thing that's not really it's monarchist it's got it comes under different names it's it's called it was once called times up i think and they take took the sort of public domain game and added a more sort of baldy nature to it essentially what you're doing you'll be you'll end up with a deck of cards that, that both teams will share or all the teams will share and you'll be trying to get the other players on your team to guess what's on the card without saying exactly what's on the card but there's three rounds in the first round you can do whatever you want you can say whatever you want you can do whatever you want apart from say what's on the card right in the second round, you can only say one word. And in the third round, you can't say anything at all. Monica's is absolutely fantastic. Everybody we've played this with loves it. Everybody we've played it with asks where we got it from. It's a superb game. And it might be a bit too late to get it for Christmas. But if you can find it, if you even if you can find Time's Up, it's one of the best party games that you can play at this time of the year. And at any time of the year, it's amazing. So just get hold of it, play it, have a good laugh. And uh, yeah, it's Monica's. So our favourite game of all time, it's Cyclades. It's Bruno Kafala's masterpiece. And I know a lot of people are saying, well, it's not as good as Kemet. Oh, we don't care. It's the theme that makes this game for us. We love the theme of Greek myths and the Greek mythology stuff, the classics. We love all that stuff. It's got everything that you want. It's got the best auction system that is in any game, the way that you can move people out by bidding more it, it, it's, it's, it's absolutely fascinating the way that the auction system turns out it's got the wonderful god tiles that, that give you different abilities that you can't always get hold of when you want to it's got it's got the mythological creatures that give you these wild special abilities these game breaking special abilities it's got those wonderful miniatures that you can stick on the board it's got combat it's got sea combat it's 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 an astonishing game. It's a slow burner. It, nothing seems to happen. It seems like you're wading through water and then suddenly, bang, out of the blue, someone gets their first metropolis and everyone's scrambling around. It's not as a lot of people would like you to believe combat oriented. The combat system in this is very, very basic. It's a case of you take the amount of troops that you've got and then you roll a die and then whoever gets the best attack system. But it's where the game isn't focused primarily on combat. Combat is just a portion of this game. It doesn't matter too much. The combat system is basic. So, yeah, Cyclades, it's been our number one game for three years. Will it be our number one game next year? I don't know. They keep pumping out expansions for this. We've got the, uh, the latest one being the Monuments expansion. So if they keep supporting it, then we'll keep buying it. And uh, honestly, to be honest with you, Cyclades is one of the best thematic and exciting games that we've ever played and it's our number one game of all time no doubt about it so there you go that's our top 100 ball games we got there eventually if you agree with this list let us know in the comments below if you've watched all of these 10 episodes give us a thumbs up and we'll see you next time